Okay, so if you have a pretty good math vocabulary, this will be a very easy problem to solve. Matter of fact, what we have here is a math word problem. And let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. The sum of two consecutive odd integers is 60. What are the integers? Now, this is a pretty easy problem, assuming you know what consecutive means and what an integer is and what odd is and what sum is. So that's why I kind of talked about having a very good math vocabulary. That's an important part of mathematics. But if you have a pretty decent math vocabulary, hopefully you understand what these terms are, and you should be able to easily identify the right answer. But this is a multiple choice question. Let's take a look at our choices here. So A is 21 and 39, B is 19 and 41, C is 29 and 31, and D is 51 and 9. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this problem. So it says the sum of two consecutive odd integers. Well, if you don't know what a consecutive odd integer uh, is, that or integers, you're going to have a tough time you know, knowing what to do. But assuming you do, the problem is the sum of these two consecutive odd integers is 60. What are the integers in question? Well, the correct answer here is uh, C, 29 and 31. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being able to solve a very typical type of algebra word problem. All right, so I said the word algebra. I don't like to say, hey, solve an, uh, the algebra word problem because a lot of people get intimidated. They're like, oh, no, I don't want to do algebra, Mr. YouTube Math Man. You know, I've had to do anything but algebra. Well, algebra is a tool, but uh, you don't even have to do algebra here. As I indicated, uh, if you know what consecutive and an integer is and what odd is, you basically should be able to say, oh, this is the right answer. Okay, it's the only one that makes uh, any sense here. So you can just go directly to your choices and pick the right answer. But if this wasn't a multiple choice question, well, you have to understand the math and that's what we're gonna get into right now. All right, so as I uh, indicated, if you don't understand the problem, you're not gonna be able to solve the problem, right? Because uh, we know that we have something to do with the sum of two something, right? It's two consecutive odd integers, but the sum of two numbers of something, right? Now, these numbers happen to be quote unquote consecutive odd integers, but the sum of these two integers is 60. So you might be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really know what to do, but I am going to take a guess and I'm totally uh, supportive of doing that. Never ever leave a math question blank, even if you have to guess, right? What do you have to lose? Now, uh, there are some tests uh, where you will get penalized for the wrong answer. A lot of things like the SAT or ACT, so you do have to, you know, uh, with those type of tests, you know, consider whether you want to guess or not. But in general, guessing is not, uh, it's much better to guess and leave a question blank. Never, never, you know, leave a question blank. But here you have the sum of something is 60. So maybe your eyes are like, well, I don't know, 51 and 9, that's 60. That looks pretty good to me. And that is a fantastic guess. Unfortunately, it's wrong, right? So the only way to get the right answer is to know the math, which means in this case, we need to understand the vocabulary first. All right, so let's get into this right now and talk about what these words mean, consecutive odd integers. Let's start with integers. Hopefully you know what an integer is, but uh, a lot of uh, people, you know, they kind of uh, learn uh, math and they just forget these kind of terms. They're like, oh, this is the basic stuff. I want to get into the more advanced things. Well, all these foundational concepts are important. You got to understand uh, you know, what these terms mean, because you're going to have problems that use these terms. And of course, if you don't know what an integer is, you're not going to be able to figure out the problem. All right, so what is an integer? 
Well, an integer is a subset of numbers on the real number uh, system or within the real number system. So within the real number system, we have integers and we're looking at integers right here. All right, but uh, what are the enter integers precisely? Well, we have a lot of different numbers in the real uh, number system. You have the natural numbers or counting numbers. Then you have the whole numbers and then you have the integers and you have the rational numbers and you have the irrational numbers. These are all things that you should be familiar with. Now, if you're like, yeah, yeah, I learned that, but I totally forgot. Well, let's do a uh, real fast, quick review, at least up to integers. I'm not gonna cover uh, all the real numbers, but when we have a number line, okay, and you have zero in the middle, all these numbers to the right of zero are positive. And this would include positive, negative decimals, fractions, you know, numbers like this, integers, and the same thing in this direction. These are all the negative numbers, but the entire number line is the entire set, uh, what we call the real number system, okay? Now, this is tremendously important uh, in mathematics. Eventually, you learn another uh, number system, which is the complex number system. So, yes, indeed, there are even more number systems beyond that, but let's just kind of talk about real numbers for now. So, here are the integers. So, just a quick review. Uh, 1, 2, and 3, these type of numbers right here, not counting 0, negative 1, and 2, what type, of numbers are, what type of numbers are these? Okay, well, these are what we call natural numbers or counting numbers, right? So it's like uh, the following, right? So why would you call these counting or natural numbers? Because what do we see, you know, occurring naturally? So like if you see like three uh, people, you don't see like 3.5 uh, you know, uh, people or cars or something like that, right? You see like one thing, hey, there's one horse, there's, you know, uh, two cats, there's three dogs, whatever the case is. So naturally occurring uh, numbers, right? And that's how we can use the digits of our little fingers to count. And this kind of goes to, you know, why we call our fingers digits. That's a terrible hand, but you get the idea. All right, so counting numbers or naturally occurring numbers. But somebody along the line was smart enough to say, hey, what if there is no... Uh, you know, uh, cats or no dogs or there's nobody there, we need a symbol to represent nothing, well, that's zero. Okay, so when we add zero to the counting or natural numbers, these are the whole numbers. Okay, so now when we have the positive whole numbers, if we take the positive whole numbers and we uh, add them to the negative whole numbers, in other words, we have the entire set of whole numbers, zero, and then we put a negative sign in front of it, all these numbers are the integers, okay? All right, so these are the set of integers. And uh, now we need to talk about this next term in our problem, and that is consecutive. All right, so what does this word mean? Well, consecutive is basically the following. You kind of uh, see it to understand it. So it's like a number and then the next number right after it, okay? So it's like a sequence of uh, one or two numbers. So this is two consecutive numbers or two consecutive uh, integers or two consecutive uh, whole numbers or, or, or counting numbers. So here is a consecutive of uh, whole numbers or integers, one, two, three, and then we can add like seven, eight, and nine. So basically you have the next number right after, uh, the next number in the sequence, and then the next number after that, right? So that's what the word consecutive means. All right, now uh, hopefully you know what odd means, right? So what's odd? Well, let's talk about odd and even. So two, four, six, eight. These are what? Well, these are even numbers. Then we have three, and then like five, and like seven. These are odd numbers, right? So between every even number, there is an odd number. Okay, so we're getting there. And then, of course, we hopefully know what sum means. Sum means it's the result of adding two things up. So the sum in three and five is eight. All right, so we're building up our math vocabulary here. Now we're going to use some algebra, all right? So this is the scary part. And we're going to think of a variable. We'll call it a variable x. So we're going to use a number to represent one of these integers. So we're dealing with two consecutive odd integers. So x is going to be one of the integers. What is going to be the other integer? So now we're going to have to put a little thought into this. So the best way to do this is to list out some consecutive odd integers. So right here, 5, 6, and 7, see, to list out uh, consecutive odd integers, it's a good idea to put that even number that's going to be in between these things or between these consecutive uh, uh, odd integers. So uh, 5 and 7 are consecutive odd integers, but how are, how are these numbers separated? 
Well, they're separated by two, right? We have to kind of skip over that even number. So if we let x represent the first odd integer, the second odd integer uh, we can represent as x plus two. And this works over here as well, right? So x, if uh, x is 11, that's odd, odd integer. The next odd integer is x plus two. Okay, so that's gonna be 13. Now that we understand what consecutive odd uh, integers are, we can go back to this problem right here and our multiple choice question, and we could just look uh, like, hey, well, do we have any consecutive odd integers? Well, these, this right here, there's a lot more odd numbers between 21 and 39, uh, 51 and 9. This definitely doesn't make any sense right here, but you can clearly see that 29, and then we have 30 and then 31. These are consecutive odd integers and they add up to 60. So this is the right answer. Again, as I indicated, if you have a strong ma uh, math vocabulary, you can just skip the algebra. And I know that makes a lot of you happy. Like, yay, Mr. do a math man. I don't wanna do algebra if I can avoid it. But algebra is a awesome tool. It makes things much easier. There's no need to be afraid of it. All right, so we're going to let x equal uh, the first odd integer, and then x plus two will be the next consecutive odd integer. All right, so now we can kind of start building uh, kind of an expression here because the sum of two consecutive odd integers is 60. What does that word is mean in mathematics? It means the equal sign. So we have this variable x, and if we figure out what x is, well, then we can figure out the answer, but we need to build an equation to solve for the variable. You see, that's how algebra works when we have uh, variables, but you need an equation. So let's go ahead and construct one right now. All right, but we're gonna kind of formalize this so uh, you know anyone reading our work will be nice and happy with the you know how neat and structured we are. So we're gonna say let x equal the first odd integer and then x plus two equal the second odd integer. Okay, so now we know that the sum of these two odd integers is 60. So here, is the equation that we want, right? So the sum of two consecutive odd integers, this is the first one, that's the second one, is 60. This is the word is, and here we have 60. So now it really this comes down to your ability to solve a basic linear equation. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now, a uh, pretty basic algebra. If you need help with this stuff, I'll get into this in a second, but we have x plus x plus two, is equal to 60, so x and x are like terms. That's gonna be two x plus two is equal to 60. So now we can subtract two from both sides of the equation, and we're gonna get two x is equal to 58. Remember, you wanna get uh, your variables on the left and your numbers on the right. So we have two x is equal to 58, so to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by two. x is equal to 29. That is our first odd integer. And our second odd integer is gonna be what? Well, it's gonna be x plus two. And obviously, it's going to be very easy to get the uh, next uh, odd integer. But before we do that, I need you to quickly do this, and that is to hit that subscribe button. I definitely need your support to continue to grow my YouTube channel. Now, I've been on YouTube for like 10 plus years. I will have well over uh, 3,000 plus videos on my YouTube channel, and I'm getting pretty close. I think I'm like around 591,000 or maybe more subscribers. Thank you so much if you are a subscriber. I really, really uh, appreciate it, and I value each and every one of you that watch my videos. I can look at you as a like math student, right? So I really feel, hey, I gotta deliver, you know, good quality math content because I feel like, hey, if I miss something, if I don't explain something in a clear and understandable way, something's not, someone's not gonna get it, and that's why I like to really take a nice leisurely pace when I explain a math problem, right? This is what I try to do on YouTube. And uh, you know, uh, my channel has been growing and it gives me a lot of happiness because I know I'm reaching a lot of people out there that need the help in math, all right? So many people give up on themselves in math and there's no need for it. So if you're struggling in math, okay, I'm telling you, you can learn this stuff, but you're gonna have to put in the work and the time. And most importantly, you need to find someone that you can uh, you know, learn math from that you like and understand, all right? So if you need help, uh, beyond this video, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. But again, this type of problem that we're doing is a very typical algebra word problem. You're going to need to know how to solve these type of problems. They show up all the time. And if you like uh, math word problems, I love doing, I have a ton of them on my YouTube channel, and I'm always coming up 
with interesting and challenging, at least I'm trying to, uh, math word problems. So that's why you want to stay tuned to what I'm posting by hitting that notification bell. All right, so really not much to do here to finish up this problem because x is equal to the first odd integer, so that's 29. x plus 2 is the second odd integer, so that's going to be what? x is 29 plus 2 is 29 plus 2, or 31. So 29 and 31, ah, that's odd, that's odd. They're consecutive and they add up to 60. So we have the right answer. Now, uh, you know, as I kind of indicated, uh, this is a typical type of problem. But uh, the key is, you know, once you master how to do one type of problem, and I'm talking like algebra word problems, like, you know, consecutive uh, number problems like this, then you'll have various, very um, different variations and flavors of these type of problems. But at least you get the basic essence of, you know, how to approach you know, solving these type of problems. And you're only going to get this through experience and practice, practice, practice. So if you need to improve in mathematics and you're like, I really have a tough time in with uh, word problems, well, don't work on word problems just yet. Now you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, word problems, you know, you do this after you get the skills, okay? Learn the basics. Learn how to solve an equ uh, equations. Learn how to you know, be neat and uh, structured, organized. Now learn, you know, make sure you have all these skills down. Now, once you have these skills down, the application of these skills is to solve problems. Oftentimes, students struggle with more problems because they don't have the underlying skills. So just kind of stop that, put that on pause, strengthen your skills, and then go back to word problems, and you just, you know, take it one step at a time. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.